On this episode of Diecast Time, I crack open a couple of Triple Eight Bathurst winners. This month, I'm cracking open the 2022 and 2020 Bathurst winning uh, ZB Commodores from Triple Eight uh, that were piloted by Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander. Uh, long time viewers of this channel probably know that uh, Garth Tander, one of my favorite drivers, Triple Eight, not, probably not one of my favorite teams, uh, but yeah, I had to add these to my collection with them being Garth Tander, Bathurst winners. Um, bit of backstory, after joining Triple Eight, Shane Van Gisbergen had a, uh, a rolling um, array of different co-drivers, but then the stars aligned for 2019. Garth Tander found himself out of a full-time gig and the two giants of the paddock, um, just because they're, they're both about six and a half foot tall, uh, just worked out well. Put the two of them together um, and go and dominate the great race. Um, we're looking at Bathurst. They came second in 2019 after the Debris incident. Uh, granted, okay, they probably were never going to win that race, but they still finished second. Uh, went on to win 2020. They were right in that lead bunch in 2021. Uh, probably never going to beat Chas Mostert on the day, but yeah, they were right in the hunt until they had uh, tie troubles right at the end. They would have finished second in that one. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, 2022 was uh, their, their day to lose. Uh, so not a bad strike rate from those guys. Uh, first thing I'd like to cover off, though, is the box art. Obviously, um, this one, we have the drawings on it. It is a plastic slip into just a, a plain black case there. The classic one has a lot of box art on there with uh, some more pictures and info on the back drawing of the car on there. And that also does come in a white, uh, normal kind of classic box sleeve thing as well to protect the actual box. Uh, but yeah, just a, a, yeah, a lot more box art happening these days, which uh, it's, it's a lot easier to find the boxes when they're like this. Now, kicking it off, they both came with certificates of authenticity, the Bianti one being 317 of 4200, and the classic one being 4458 of 669. Six. So a lot of each of them. The classic one came with that flag that, um, if you remember, this was the COVID Bathurst where no fans were allowed. This was supposed to be the final Holden Bathurst as well, obviously with the sponsorship ending. And uh, yeah, that fan that came out with the Holden flag that Shane drove around on that victory lap with. Um, and then the uh, the 2022 one comes with a replica of the Peter Brock trophy and the Bathurst new news um what do you call it uh, newspaper thing that uh yeah they put on the front of the car after the victory uh it, not things that i display with the cars but uh nice little things to have with them so here are the two cars on uh, first glimpse not much different between them they are very similar looking even the paint jobs didn't change much that uh thanks holden fans there because this was the last one for triple eight being sponsored by holden it is actually quite a nice model the classic one there um obviously with it being sealed the fit and finish is pretty good but then as you come around to the anti one uh, just a lot which is just, um, I don't know, the colours in person, I'm not sure how that's coming out on camera, but the colours look a bit more vibrant. It just looks a little bit more genuine. Having said that, I'm not a big fan also of the, the, the stickers there for the fuel filling, but uh, it's the same when you come across to the classic collectible version. Um, this one also, if you look it uh, for a Bianti car, which I've criticised them in the past about how they sit, that one sits a lot truer, um, while the classic one, the wheels, it's a bit hard to pick up on that. The wheels sit in a little bit, like the offset isn't quite right. Um, the camber doesn't look great on that front one, but uh, it's um, really nitpicking on these kind of things. Uh, they are very good 
looking cars. Um, the interior is definitely a lot brighter. Um, not sure how much that's coming up on camera. In the classic one, uh, you can see in the interior a lot easier than in the Bianti one. Um, there's obviously opening parts on that one. I haven't had a good history recently of opening things up and uh, not breaking anything, so I'm going to leave it like that because the fit and finish is actually really good. This is probably one of the better Bianti ones we've uh, had in some time. Now, just as a comparison, I've put in one of the authentic collectibles, uh, ZB Commodores, and nearly said VF. Uh, just as a bit of a comparison, I mean, they're all very similar looking, and until you get really close, you don't notice any differences in them. Um, they're just great looking model cars, and uh, I'm very happy to have these in my collection. Uh, and I've now, I think I've got all of the Garth Town and Bathurst winners in uh, 1 18th in the collection. So that's my unboxing and review of the 2020 and 2022 Bathurst winning cars from Triple Eight Racing. Uh, my pick of the bunch obviously here is the Bianti one. As you've seen, the, the three with the Authentic one next to it as well, they are very similar. Um, I just, I don't know, it's, it's very nitpicking. The, the when you compare the two, the anti one just feels a little bit a little bit better. Even when you kind of move it on the table, that feels quite flat. That it just doesn't feel like it's sitting as level. You touch the tires, they're not quite. Uh, they, these are more feel like tires. They feel a bit plasticky in comparison to rubbery. Um, and then just the which I've been very this. Bianti, this one sits awesome. I've been critical about how a few of the uh, previous ones from you have sat. This one actually sits, it displays really, really nicely. The offset on the wheels seems to be in a little bit too much on the classic one. Um, just not quite giving it that true look. But as I said, I'm really nitpicking with them. These are, these models are really, really good these days. Uh, probably the big, um, this, this one's got the hamburger cam on it, this one doesn't. And I'm not sure if this is right, but the aerial is in a totally different spot. That's in the, the center of, the roof there whereas this the aerial is really offset uh, on the roof on that one so I'm not sure if that was something that was changed over the years but yeah um, probably the hamburger cam being one of the, the, the biggest things missing off this one but yeah we're, uh, I'm just really happy that I've got both of these in my collection uh, let, let me know if uh, you've got them as well and what you think of them but until next time I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later